Opel CD 1969. The huge windshield, together with the doors, rises forward, opening up access to the salon. This is the Opel CD concept. This is how German designers saw the sports car of the future back in 1969. For most of its life, Opel was under the protectorate of General Motors, which meant not only a solid cash injection, but also the need to meet the high standards of the concern. Therefore, in the early 1960s, one of the oldest German brands opened its own design office in Rosleim, modeled after a similar GM studio in Michigan. The newly formed division had a difficult main goal, to create a new generic design for Opel, which would be read in every model. How well the new design office has coped with its task, here everyone will decide for himself. The very first creation, which was designed by the studio, was the experimental GT concept car dot shown at the 1965 Frankfurt Motor Show. Subsequently, he was reborn into a serial Opel GT, which has been produced since 1968. Automotive enthusiasts will remember this model thanks to the unusual headlight opening mechanism. The factory design studio, inspired by the success of the coupe, wanted to create a bigger and faster sports car. Moreover, the insiders of Auto, Motor and Sport just started writing notes about the new Mercedes-Benz C111 Supercar, which was supposed to debut at the 1969 Frankfurt Motor Show. The head of the design department, George Gallion, believed that such a challenge was quite within Opel's strength and therefore instructed the designer Charles M. Jordan and his team to prepare an unpleasant surprise for fellow countrymen. Since the deadlines were tight, there could be no talk of any production car, at first it was so. What were the advantages, this approach not only gave designers more freedom of action, but also made life easier for engineers. Subsequently, it turned out that the creation of the car as a show car was absolutely correct, at the auto show. Representatives of Mercedes-Benz said that their C111 would not be serial. Opel management, having weighed all the pros and cons, decided to do the same. Our car is just a demonstration of what we can do. But we are not planning to launch it into a series, the bosses told reporters. Fate on this score, however, had its own views. The concept, which was presented by Opel in Frankfurt on September 9, 1969, was named CD. Obviously, not in honor of the CD, but from the words of Coupe Diplomat, a spectacular grand tourer, painted in a rich candy apple red, was built on the units of the Diplomat A model and was equipped with a 5.4 liter V8 engine with 230 horsepower. But the angular Diplomat in the CD was barely readable. Mainly because of the bodywork. The concept received an original tail which was perfected in a wind tunnel for more than one day. Even lighter fiberglass panels were stretched over the lightweight roll bar, and the head optics, like on the GT model, were hidden out of sight when not in use. The main feature of the CD was the windshield and the style of an aircraft canopy, which was raised forward by means of hydraulic struts along with the roof and side sections. Thus, the concept was devoid of the usual doors. While this solution seems terribly impractical, it had one huge advantage, the CD received almost invisible A-pillars, which contributed to better forward visibility. In addition, landing through ordinary doors would be a living hell for short people, because the height of the concept barely exceeded one meter. The interior also turned out to be quite futuristic, it had a telephone, climate control. Both front seats were made motionless. The driver's seat was adjusted by means of adjustable pedals and a steering column. In general, the concept CD was able to snatch a piece of glory from Mercedes-Benz. And his life did not end at the Frankfurt Motor Show. GM's US bosses were unhappy with Opel's decision not to release the CD, given the public reaction at the auto show. And that is why they found a compromise solution, the car will become serial, but by the efforts of the newly formed company. All Opel has to do is help the new firm with engineering. Pietro Frua, owner of the eponymous design studio, received an order from General Motors to build two CD prototypes that would look more earthy than the Frankfurt concept. And Frua, in the opinion of GM representatives, did his job well. 
although hardly anyone will deny that the car has lost a lot of its former charm. The production of the sports coupe was entrusted to ex-racer Eric Bitter, who took over at the helm of Bitter. The bodies of the serial CDs, the sports car retained the name of the concept, were created by Bohr, and the filling was created by Opel. The result was Bitter CD cars, which began mass production in 1973. The Bitter CD was positioned as an exclusive Grand Tourer, as was indicated by its price, at the start of sales it was DM58400, and circulation, only 395 coupes were created in seven full years of production. After the CD, Bitter built other models, but this is a reason for a separate story. Let's just note that now Bitter is essentially a tuning studio that specializes in Opel cars. As for the original CD concept, the car is still alive today and occasionally appears at events where Opel participates. In the same 1969, a silver-colored copy of it was built. Fans of the brand tend to believe that the CD concept is the most beautiful car in Opel history. And it is difficult to argue with this statement. The Opel CD was designed under the control of Charles M. Jordan, and was first shown at the 1969 Frankfurt Motor Show on September the 9th. The Opel CD, Coup Diplomat, featured a one-piece greenhouse windscreen and side windows with integrated doors, which pivoted forward to access the cabin. The Opel CD was based on an Opel Diplomat and featured the 5354cc Opel Diplomat engine. 1969, Opel CD, the next bullseye, encouraged by the positive public response to the experimental GT and the great market success of the series production GT, Opel designers in research and advanced design concentrated on designing visionary coups and sports cars. In 1969, the Opel design team under the leadership of Charles Chuck M. Jordan hit its next bullseye at the I in Frankfurt, the Opel CD. This luxury, two-seat coup with a V8 engine was based on the Diplomat, CD equals coup Diplomat, and conceived from the outset, as people say today, as a concept car not intended for series production. It was, instead, intended to provide a look ahead to the development of cars in the 1970s, and to clearly indicate the future path of Opel design. With the elegant CD, measuring just 1.11 meters in height, Opel designers again managed to appeal to people's hearts and minds. Its clean styling, with a wraparound windshield without hay pillars which opened up like the canopy of a fighter jet, whetted people's appetite. On the other hand, the operating concept, with its firmly installed seats and the individually adjustable cockpit, pedals, steering wheel, instrument panel, demonstrated the technological precision of German engineering. The Opel CD, Coup Diplomat, was the star of the I in Frankfurt in 1969. A thoroughbred Grand Turismo based on Opel Diplomat technology, the candy apple red Opel CD featured a canopy-like cockpit opening that replaced conventional doors. It was a convincing showcase of the Opel designer's skill and ambition. A few years later other European competitors also began to develop and present concept vehicles themselves. The Opel CD was designed under the control of Charles M. Jordan and featured a one-piece greenhouse windscreen and side windows with integrated doors, which pivoted forward hydraulically to allow access to the cabin. The steering column and steering wheel pivoted up as well. This concept was also further developed and ultimately built in low-volume production. Built as a styling study, the Opel design team perfected the aerodynamics of the Opel CD in extensive wind tunnel testing. This is the norm in automotive design today, but it was a quite innovative in the late 1960s. The sleek front end with retractable headlamps flows seamlessly into the wraparound windscreen constructed without the visual blockage of a roof pillar. A roomy and comfortable two-seater, the Q Diplomat featured finely upholstered leather club seats. The steering column with the attached instrument panel and the pedals were fully adjustable and could be repositioned for optimal ergonomics. Special attention was paid to ergonomics in this study as well as a futuristic car telephone conveniently located in the sleek center console. 